thanks very much for uh, coming to talk to us today about your um, journey with video. Can we just start with the first question of what is your business? Can you tell us what it is that you do? Yeah, of course. Uh, well, our business is Alexander's Family Butchers. Uh, and basically, as for it says in the tin, we're a butchers. Um, we also offer a, an online service as well. We've been running that for just over a year now, uh, as well as a front shop counter service as well. Um, and we've recently just moved back to our hometown of Kamala just before lockdown hit. When folks are starting to make videos, I always say it's a good idea to really think about the why of your business. What's your kind of your grand mission, if you like? Because if you're going to be making videos, you want to get that passion across to people. So have, are you able to try and sum up, you know, in 15 seconds, uh, roughly, what the, the why of your business is? Uh, in a nutshell, I've just worked in butchers for as long as I can remember, and I think it's a natural progression to own your own shop. Uh, you have loads of ideas, but unable to implement them, and if you're just an employee, whereas if you're the boss, you can do what you want to do, and hopefully that will work for yourself. Um, so I think for us, it's a bit of the passion's there to do the job, but also to find a better work balance as a family. We're a family of five now, so I think you, you need that. And we love food. And we love food, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and that kind of takes us to that first video that we made together when I came and, and interviewed you, and it really was you telling your story about how you both started the business and what that focus is for you about being a family butcher. What is it you you bring to your customers that you feel you maybe couldn't when you're just working for someone else? I think a lot of fresh ideas. I, th yeah. I think, unfortunately, butchers is one of the trades where it's very old-fashioned, very traditional. Um, and I think the, the butchers that are surviving are the ones that are coming up with new infinite uh, ideas. Uh, I think you need young, fresh, like stuff fries, oven-ready dishes. I mean, even over the last couple of months, I don't know if you've noticed, but the supermarkets are now closing their counters, mm -hmm. their butcher meat, their fishmongers, and that tells you a story that people just want to buy these kind of pre-made, oven-ready uh, kind of dishes, quick, simple, because again, like us, if you're a family of five, you don't have time. But your wife's not the old mother who sits at home and looks after the five kids and makes a pot of stew while you're out working. You know, she's out working as well. At seven o'clock at night, you're not going to make dinners for the five yep. you know, Where we can offer is the quality. We're offering the convenience of an oven ready, a stir fry, a quick dinner, but you're getting better quality than the like, frozen foods or supermarket quality. And, uh, and I think from looking at the <laughs> videos that you've made, obviously there was that first kind of story interview video that we did which was a, about your business but then the kind of more how-to business uh, videos behind the scenes that really comes across about the kind of the products that you offer the quality of the product but yeah. also just how you put it all together kind of thing seeing seeing that I think we've tried to do a bit of a balance with the videos so we've tried Jim does a lot of you know here's where your food comes from, here's where your meat comes from, you know, breaking things down and different cuts that you can get from, you know, particular uh, meats and things. And then we've done a bit of, you know, inviting people into our house where we do have this family environment, obviously with the three kids and, you know, here's us making dinner for five and something that pleases everyone or, you know, yeah. it's not just freezer food, basically. So we've kind of tried to do a bit of also, I think the, the kind of money side of it, like you don't need to have the most expensive cuts. So if you're a farmer, if I've got cheaper cuts, is value for money. But we'll make the casseroles, the, the you know the dinners are going straight, so that we bit further, rather than buying you know five expensive steaks, where there's not a lot of families can afford that. So trying to kind of cover all bases, you know, yes, we are a butchers, yes, we sell quality products, but we're also very competitive, and here's some helpful hints of where you can stretch that pound a wee bit further. Oh. So your videos are very informative, kind of having that kind of conversation with your customers before I would think so, yeah, I would think so. Uh -huh. well, Jim likes to chat, so I think it's difficult for him. He has to go back and edit it and make sure that he can fit it into that, <laughs> that window. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think looking at your videos, because you are so passionate about the food, that really, really comes across. And that kind of authenticity is something that I imagine kind of captures your audience and, and would make you want to go to your shop as opposed to a kind of faceless supermarket. Would you agree with that? Totally. I think you have to see the, the genuineness of the person behind the camera. Not any can read a script or say what they're, they're told to say, but I think it comes across pretty well if you believe in what you're selling. Um, because it's natural, it's no force by any means. Um, but the downside to that is it's very, very hard to keep this physique under control when you've already tasted products. 
quality even, control. Even the it kids that have started saying how much quality control do you need to do, Dad? <laughs> that's right. I think you said that in your first video, never never trust a thin butcher. That's right, yeah, that's yeah. my motto, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so looking at some of those videos that you've done, what what's your most popular video? Do you know off the top of your head or kind of roughly? So between the initial video that we did with yourself and out of all the videos we've done, strangely enough, the one that has the, the most hits next to yours is the new premises. We did a video in the car. Um, and I think it's a mixture between the banter between me and my wife, the journey, pointing out historical buildings along the way, and actually just information how to find us. I think it was quite comical, uh, and it seemed to be a really big reach. So whether it was a case of loads of customers seeing it and they're glad we're moving back to Kamarna, or whether pure comedy value, I don't know. But either way, it, it reached a hell of a lot for us. I think as well, it was it was something we decided to do. We thought it would get it out there quicker, and it would explain it better if we actually showed physically how to find us. We've we've moved to a sort of industrial estate, so it might not be completely obvious from the outset where we are. But I think the video worked really well. I think so. Um, <coughs> it kind of hit that target audience. So. Yeah, I like I like that video because it's I mean it's quite a long video because normally I would say mm -hmm. social media keep it under two minutes really yeah. tight edit it down but you're right I think it's just it's dead natural and it's just it's fun and it's also informative and um, so you kind of hit the ground running I imagine when you got to Kilmarnock then that people had seen that video they they knew where it, you were. it was a crazy we were open really a bit a week and a half two weeks and the two weeks we just couldn't cope. Um, the online side had just taken a massive leap. Mm -hmm. um, the counter was, you know, at one point I had to phone my wife. I was sitting with about 60 customers <laughs> in the shop. I was optimising it. So that was actually before lockdown you got super busy. Was that because, do you think people were preparing for not being able to go to supermarkets? Or do you think it was just, it was the new premises and the, you know, the message had got out there? I think the first week for me was probably because mm -hmm. we'd moved and then obviously the video showing everybody where we were and, and we'd, we'd sort of you know we knew we were going to be moving so we'd built it up and so I think the first week definitely um I think was just genuine you know old customers new customers interested customers but I think the second week was probably more when that panic buy started yeah. to really kick in and people were just just going crazy. crazy. I mean, I think if we'd been selling toilet roll, we'd have been right in there. Uh, 